Hi, this is Pastor Randy Shannon, and I am finishing up my sermon series today called Following Jesus, Five Essential Practices of Christian Living, with the message called Sharing Your Faith, Fishing and Reflecting. Our scripture for today is from Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 20, Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16, 2 Corinthians 5, 20, and 1 Peter 3, 15. First reading from Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, we read, You are the light of the world, Jesus said. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Paul writes in his second letters to the Corinthians in five, verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 20, he says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do it with gentleness and respect. May the Lord bless you as you read his word. Over the past five weeks, we've looked at five of the essential practices of Christian living, five exercises that have marked the authentic practice of Christianity from its very beginning. They are, number one, to worship God. Number two, to grow in faith through the study of Scripture. Number three, to serve God and others. Number four, to live a life of generosity. And number five, to share our faith with others. We said that each of these things are things that we are meant to do together as a group and alone as individuals. If we have a hard time following Jesus, perhaps it's because we haven't exercised our faith enough. If, you, if your spiritual walk with Christ leaves you a bit short of breath, maybe it's because you're out of shape, spiritually speaking. Spiritual exercise, like physical exercise, requires us to do it on a regular basis. The thing that we have been talking about, these things like serving and worshiping and studying and, and uh, giving, these things are not revolutionary ideas. They're things we are all aware of. We just don't do them as often as we should. We can't have the life that God intends for us to have, the abundant life, the life that is truly life, if we are spiritually out of shape. Before I talk about the final element of this service, uh, this series rather, let's review. The first week, we worship, we said. We gather together to sing, pray, listen to the word, have fellowship and encourage each other, and then be sent out to live our faith in the world. Then daily on our own, we pray and express our gratitude to God. We study. We study the scriptures together at church or in Bible study groups, and then we study them on our own each day, asking God to speak to us what he wants us to know, and then seeking to apply that in our lives. Serving God. We serve God together as a church, and then on our own, we serve others by showing them kindness and compassion, knowing that one of the ways we serve God is by serving others. Generosity. We give together and on our own of our talents, our time, and money, knowing that we were made to be generous and that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And finally, today we're talking about sharing our faith. In the first message of this series, I said that one of the oldest questions Christians have asked is, what's the chief end of man? What's our purpose? And the answer is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. This might cause you to wonder, why are we still here? Why don't we just go straight to heaven after we believe so that we can glorify and enjoy God forever? If there is a purpose for us being here, then it surely must be to do something that can only be done while we are here. And one of those things that can only be done before we go to heaven is inviting others to go there with us. Jesus told his disciples that he came to seek and save the lost. And he later told them, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
that surely means, among other things, that we are to seek and to save the loss, as he did. He described how there's more rejoicing in heaven over the lost sheep that comes home. And he left us with this challenge, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Go. One of his most trusted disciples, Peter, later, later wrote, The Lord's not slow about keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God in Jesus has made it clear that he wants people, all people, to come to salvation in him, and we should too. But how will they know about him unless they hear about him? And how will they hear about him unless someone tells them about him? And what if the only person that is positioned to tell them about him is you? For many of you, I'm sure the idea of sharing your faith is the scariest of the five practices we've been talking about. We all know horror stories about people who have done this poorly. I remember a person shouting at cars on the town square as I was growing up. I'm sure that this was her idea of sharing the good news, but I'm afraid that more people were turned off by her tactics than were attracted to Jesus. We don't want to be like that. Plus, it's hard for some of us to share our faith because we were raised with the teaching that there are two things you don't talk about in polite company, religion and politics. But the fact is, as Christians, we believe that Jesus was God's response to the human condition, that God saw our brokenness and sent Jesus to bring healing and to fulfill the deepest longings of our souls. He came, he lived and died and rose again on the third day, and he said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and nobody comes to the Father but by me. And he told us to tell other people about him. So why don't we? Imagine it if someone discovered the cure for cancer but kept it to themselves just in the event that they personally needed it someday, but didn't share that information with others. We can't imagine such callous selfishness. Well, if you found forgiveness in Christ, you have something that other people need, the only cure for what they've got, and the only way they can hear about it may be from you. Penn Gillette, the atheist, illusionist and comedian from the famous duo known as Penn and Teller has been quoted as saying, I don't respect people who don't proselytize. I don't respect that at all. If you believe that there's a heaven and hell and people could be going to hell or not getting eternal life or whatever, and you think it's not really worth telling them this because it might make it socially awkward, how much do you have to hate somebody to believe that everlasting life is possible and not tell them that? See, even a prominent atheist understands that Christians are called to share their faith. Speaking of being called, in Matthew 4, 18 to 20, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net in the lake, for they were fishermen. He said, come follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. And at once they left their nets and followed him. You see, Jesus met them where they were. And he spoke to them in a language they understood. And we would be wise to keep that in mind, too, when we share our faith. Meet people as they are, where they are, and speak to them in the language they understand. During the famous Sermon on the Mount, Jesus proclaimed in Matthew 5, verse 14, You are the light of the world. A town built on the hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Who is glorified by the things that you do? Are you reflecting Jesus' light and his love to those around you? Just before his ascension into heaven, Jesus gave these instructions in Matthew 28, verse 19. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And the Gospel of Luke chapter 24 records it this way, that Jesus said, Repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in my name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And he continues this thought, Luke does, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, where Jesus says, 
You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And this wasn't just the original 12 disciples Jesus was talking to. We're all called to share the good news. As Paul says in his second letters to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 5.20, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. We are Christ's ambassadors. We represent Christ to this world. Peter gives a similar command in to Christians in 1 Peter 3.15. He says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do it with gentleness and respect. We are told to be prepared to share your faith, our faith. But how do we do it in a way that's respectful and gentle and not obnoxious, in a way that draws other people to Christ? How do we live and speak in such a manner that people will want, us, want to know us and want to know our God? Let me ask you this. How does your faith in Christ make a difference in your life? That may be a key to sharing your faith. You don't have to have a degree in theology or the Bible. Like so many others did in the Bible, just tell people what Jesus has done for you. One of the Bible study books that accompanied the first season of the chosen TV show suggested a simple method. It was called, I was, but God. It works like this. For example, Mary Magdalene might say, I was possessed by seven demons and I led a life of shame, but God sent Jesus to set me free and redeem me. Levi or Matthew in in the Bible might say, I was a tax tax collector and hated by all my Jewish peers, but God loved me and gave me a new life in Christ. Or Simon the Zealot might say, I was committed to the violent overthrow of Roman rule, thinking that would solve all our problems. But God sent Jesus to show me that our problem was the need for forgiveness, not freedom. Or Randy might say, I was raised in the church but had never really believed for myself and was trying to earn my own salvation, but God showed me that only Christ could forgive my sins and help me be the person I should be. Yes, that last one was me. You see how it works? I was, but God. What's the difference God has made in your life through Christ? You know, there are a lot of people who don't care what Randy Shannon has to say, but they care what you have to say because they know you and they know you care for them. You've earned the right for them to respect what you have to say. And sometimes it's more about how you treat them, what you do, than it is about what you say. St. Francis of Assisi has often been given credit for saying, preach the gospel always, if necessary, use words. You see, your life of worship your study of scriptures, your service to God and acts of kindness to others and the acts of generosity with your your time and your talents and money that you do are preaching a sermon all the time. Somewhere along the way, you will be given an opportunity perhaps to preach it in words too, and you need to be prepared for that. Do something for me right now. Write down the name of one or two people who are most responsible for you believing in Christ today. What did they do that affected you? What did sharing faith look like when it came from them? I'm going to give you a minute to do that. Give you a second or two to write down the name of one or two people who are most responsible for you believing in Christ today. I'm guessing but I think it wasn't about them asking you if you were saved. Or even if you had ever heard of the four spiritual laws, they probably didn't argue you into believing by presenting the good arguments in case uh, against your unbelief. I suspect more than likely they loved you into a life of faith. What does it look like to share your faith? Maybe it's seeing someone going through a crisis and telling them you're praying for them and then finding a practical way to help. Not just saying, if you need me, call me, but actually doing something that you know can help. 
Maybe it's sharing a song that means a lot to you and telling others why. Maybe it's posting a devotional thought on your social media that really spoke to you. Or inviting someone to church. Or sharing a link to a sermon that was really helpful to you that you think might help someone else. Maybe it was just the way you lived your life with compassion and integrity and generosity and faith. Do the people you hang out with, that you work with, the ones you interact with on social media, have any idea that you are a Christian? You may have heard me tell the story that happened at one of the first churches where I pastored. We had a special event, and one of our ladies was putting up posters in the small town where she lived. And she came back laughing as she told me that one of the business owners was shocked that she went to church. He said, I have no idea you went to church. I didn't feel that was funny, though. It kind of broke my heart. Along about that time, it was popular in Christian youth groups to ask, if you were put on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Would there? Have you shared your faith and reflected the light and love of Jesus to others? My hope for you is that someday, When a pastor asked a group to write down the name of a person who was most responsible for them believing in Christ, someone will write your name. Worship God because he's worthy of our worship. Study the scriptures like Jesus did so that you might be equipped to do the work God calls you to do. Serve God like Jesus did by living a life of compassion and kindness and treating others fairly. Give generously as Jesus gave himself for you so that you might know the fullness of joy that God intends for you. And share your faith in Christ so that others may know and enjoy God forever too. You want to have a life that really matters? Jesus says, I'll show you how. Follow me. Follow me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to show us how to live. For your steadfast love for us, for your grace that's renewed every morning. Help us to honor you in the way we worship, the way we seek to grow in our faith, the way we serve others in your name, and give generously to show your loving care to those of your children who are in need. Help us to let your love shine through us in such a way that others will be drawn to you and come to know you too. Help us to truly follow the example that was set for us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, that ends our series, but it doesn't end the challenge for you to follow Jesus. I hope that you will have some tools now that you can use to help you do that better. And until next time, when we begin a new sermon series on the things that Jesus talked about in the Sermon on the Mount. Until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious upon, unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen.